Hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you never miss an update from Neela Bakore Tutorials. In this video, we'll talk about the different types of life cycles which are seen in case of yeast. The first one that we are talking of is haplontic life cycle. This type of life cycle is seen in a species that is Schizosaccharomyces octosporus. In case of this particular species, the organisms are haploid. So they are normally haploid. And now let us see how they exhibit their life cycle. Asexual sexual reproduction completely. Say this is uh, one yeast which is undergoing asexual or sexual reproduction. So now when it reproduces asexually, this is haploid, it shows division by fission. So here there are two cells which are formed and these cells they are haploid. So division which is taking place is mitotic division. Now after this these cells they undergo hologamy. Hologamy means these two haploid cells which are leading their normal life as haploids they fuse to form a diploid zygote. Now the zygote it undergoes meiotic division. So when it undergoes meiosis we find haploid cells formed and these haploid cells would again lead their life in the form of haploids. So this is what is happening when asexual and sexual reproduction takes place. Now when this sexual reproduction is taking place, the zygote is also known as ascus. So now what happens is, if it undergoes only one meiotic division, we would get these haploid cells. But if meiosis is followed by mitosis, we can get eight ascospores. So these structures, they are known as ascospores and their number could vary from four to eight. Either there are going to be four, that means if only meiosis takes place, there would be four. If meiosis is followed by mitosis, then eight. Then how it works is, this is a diploid nucleus, a 2N nucleus. Now inside this, the nucleus is going to divide. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to draw an intermediate stage here. Say so this is the zygote which has undergone meiosis. And now we find one, two, three, four nuclei which are haploid. Each nucleus would get surrounded by little cytoplasm and these are the ones which are released. This is only after meiosis. If meiosis is followed by mitosis, then we are going to see eight ascospores and each ascospore will develop into a haploid organism. Now in this complete life cycle, how many stages are haploid and how many are diploid? Except for the zygote, there is nothing which is diploid. That means all the stages are haploid except for the zygote. That too for a very short period of time. And that's why we say that the life cycle is haplontic life cycle. Majority of the life is spent as haploid cells. Now let us talk about the second type that is called the diplontic life cycle. Diplontic life cycle is seen in the species Saccharomycode Ludwigi. In this diplontic life cycle is seen. So the normal yeast is diploid yeast. Now how do they reproduce? Suppose this is the cell which is a diploid cell. It undergoes asexual reproduction say by budding. So the nucleus is going to divide mitotically. 
mitotic division and a bud is formed. Now, this bud which is formed gets that nucleus and it is going to detach. So, this is a diploid cell. This is also a diploid cell. Now, say one diploid cell, a diploid cell undergoes meiosis. As a result of meiosis, there are haploid gametes which are formed. These gametes, the two gametes are going to fuse to form a 2L zygote and this zygote is going to lead its life in the form of a diploid cell. Now in this entire life cycle, how many stages are haploid and how many diploid? If we remove this gamete part, everything is diploid. So maximum life is spent in the form of a diploid cell. So we call that life cycle diplontic. Now the third one is for haplodiplontic life cycle. And this is seen in case of Saccharomyces cerevisiae. In Saccharomyces cerevisiae, this is the life cycle which is seen. That means there are haploid cells as well as diploid cells. So a major part is spent as haploid and equal part is spent as a diploid cell. Now let us talk about this. Say this is a cell which is haploid. It reproduces asexually by budding. So during budding, endomitosis is going to take place. It will produce two nuclei. One nucleus will migrate into this bud. And now these two will start leading their life as haploid cells. So this is haploid life cycle. This haploid organism, all these are haploid. This is also haploid. This is also haploid. If they are reproducing in this manner a, a by mitotic division to produce only haploid cells, most of the part is in the form of haploid cells. Now, if two haploid cells, which are leading their life in the form of a normal cell, they fuse, that means hologamy is taking place to form a 2L zygote. But this zygote does not undergo meiosis. It reproduces by mitotic division and budding. So now what is going to happen here is, here the nucleus is going to divide mitotically. That means this nucleus is 2L, this is also 2L. A bud is formed, one nucleus migrates here, this is 2L, this is 2L. And now these two organisms, they start leading their life as diploid cells. So a major part is diploid, a major or a half part is haploid. They reproduce by budding as haploid cells also. They reproduce by budding as diploid cells also. Now haploid to diploid movement. Haploid will become diploid by fusion of two cells that is hologamy. Diploid cell will become haploid by meiotic division to form gametes. Whenever a zygote is formed, that zygote is termed as ascus. And as we talked about ascus earlier also, that if in ascus only meiotic division takes place, then four ascospores will be formed. And if meiotic division is followed by mitosis, then eight ascospores are formed. So number of ascospores is 4 or 8. It will be 4 if only meiosis takes place and it is 8 if meiosis is followed by mitosis. Then 
these two numbers are produced. So this is very important. So number of ASCO spores varies from 4 to 8. This is yeast and the life cycle. And we have talked about the economic importance of yeast anyways, that it is used for baking industry as well as for brewing industry because of the reaction that is performed by it, the enzymes that is zymase complex, it converts complex sugars into simple sugars and even ethyl alcohol. It results in production of carbon dioxide also. So if we let the reaction continue till carbon dioxide production, we use it for baking industry. And if we let it continue till ethyl alcohol formation, then we are using that reaction in brewing industry. So Saccharomyces cerevisiae, especially this one, is the baker's yeast as well as the brewer's yeast. So this is one member or one example of Ascomycetes. The next one is Penicillium, which we'll take up in the next video.